then to wrap it up, our main event, Venezuela's Edir Terry taking on Mexico's Miguel Gonzalez. Definitely setting it up for a great evening, but up first to kick off the evening, Felipe Diaz taking on Mexico's Alan Cantu. Both these men are warriors with lots of heavy hands as we get excited in this bout at 135 pounds. We go to Luper Contreras for the introduction. Entrando a la jaula, Felipe Díaz. Felipe Díaz making his way to la jaula. Had a competition recently back in July. Nickname El Loco, or the crazy, <laughs> uh, coming in here. Uh, a man who uh, trains out of the American Combat Gym in South Florida. He's a brutal striker, he says. Uh, Martin Shirley to deliver here and uh, has a background in kickboxing and a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I think it's going to be, uh, he's got his hands full tonight though with uh, Alan Cantu. It's going to be a very difficult fight. As we get ready for the introduction to Alan Cantu. Su contrario, Alan Cantu. Alan Cantu is a familiar face we've seen compete inside La Jaula. Has five knockouts, training out of the MMA lab, which is home to Benson Henderson. Has a uh, quite an interesting story with his motorcycle adventures. But Martin, this is a guy who has phenomenal striking, resilient. He's a pressured pilot. He likes to pressure his opponent. He's gonna bring everything tonight. Yeah, I've seen him fight before. I've watched him run over a couple of guys here at Combate Global. And I know this guy is gonna bring the heat. He's gonna wanna keep it on the feet. And uh, man, he's ready to rock. As we take a look at the head-to-head, -head, la cara a cara. Diaz 31 compared to Cantu's 28 years of age. The height, not much of a difference there. 5'7 for Diaz, 5'6 for Cantu, the reach. The advantage goes to Felipe Diaz at 71, 64 to count two, and the weight there pretty much fairly even as we get ready for the official introduction. Luper Contreras! Este duelo, tres vueltas, división peso gallo, this bout, three rounds in the Bantam weight division. Los jueces son, the judges are, Mark Streisand, Dorian Mirasola, y James Lazaro. Presentando la esquina azul, presenting the blue corner, vestido de rojo, wearing red. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 135 libras y media on the scale. He registered an official 135 and one half pounds. En su sexto combate dentro de la jaula, con tres victorias y dos derrotas, he enters la jaula for the sixth time as a pro, with three victories against two losses. Representando a Santiago de Chile, Felipe El Loco Su opponent in the esquina roja, vestido del tricolor mexicano, verde, blanco y rojo. His opponent in the red corner, wearing the colors of Mexico, green, white, and red. Su peso oficial, 135 libras y media. His official weight, 135 and one half pounds. En 18 combates, mantiene un record de 10 victorias y 8 derrotas. In 18 pro bouts, he maintains a record of 10 victories against 8 losses. Entrenando en Phoenix, Arizona. Y puro Monterrey, Nuevo León, México. Alan Beche Cantú. El referí, Alana Vélez. Felipe, Alan, Felipe. All right, I gave you the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead. Come out, fight. Back up, back up. Alana Vélez, the third man in La Jaula. Felipe Diaz. Representing Chile. Fight, are you ready? On the con Fight, opposite ready? side. Fight. Alan Cantu out of Mexico as we get this bout underway. Our first of the evening leading up to tonight's main event at Dear Terry versus Miguel Gonzalez. And next week, La Loba versus Sally Man. Don't want to miss it. Juliana Pena will be joining us, former world champion, Martin. Diaz trying to take the center of the ring right now, but obviously Cantu, very active, already landed a kick, a couple of strikes to welcome the Chilean back to La Jaula. Strong kick to get it off here from Felipe from Chile. With a uh, civil engineer, has that black belt background in kickboxing. 
And when you talk about black belts, right, well, people always think it's karate or jiu-jitsu. But in other countries, especially in South America, kickboxing, they, they give belts yeah. for the discipline. Well, very difficult to sometimes quantify what those belts mean. But right now, Diaz has landed a big kick, but he's also eaten some leather from Kantu, too. Both fighters still getting their range right now. But the reach advantage definitely to Diaz. So Kantu's going to have to get inside, throw that big left like he's trying. Whoop, there's a little something there. Great action for these guys to kick it off. They're feeling out, testing each other out with that striking game. But yeah, Diaz has, has been very successful with that jab, and he's landing some shots right there, too. Kantu, when he's not training, he loves to jump on his Harley Davidson <laughs> and ride around to well, the longest well, drive with 14 hours. Well, hopefully he's not going to be on the run tonight because he has been pressing the action, but definitely he's got to get inside to land, and each time Diaz comes in can be very dangerous for him like we almost saw right there. Cantu throwing in that right hand, quite heavy. Felipe with the jab. Great combination there from Cantu, that one and then the low kick, Martin. And you can see Cantu is really looking for that left hand. Definitely a height differential here, too. That one oh. inch, that one inch makes a big difference. And you can see there where Felipe just standing up the taller fighter. Another solid kick by Diaz. And for anybody watching, when you hear those at home, that's like taking a baseball bat across the thighs. There's nothing fun about it. Felipe's corner telling him to throw it, throw it. Let them hands go. Stop being patient. But Martin, they're, 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 it's, it's very different when you're in the, the corner, man. You've cornered many <laughs> fighters, killing Jim Miller, yeah. a veteran of the sport. Uh, it's easier said than done. Yeah, when you're a cornerman, you can be yelling all you want. Right now, those guys are in there, focused, tunnel vision. They don't hear much. Jim, in particular, says, man, he never hears anything we're saying, even though we're screaming with veins in our neck. But man, I'll tell you, Kantu is Kantu's close with that left each time. Diaz is going to have to be careful. Last time we saw Kantu in action was in May. He got a TKO victory over Pierre Daguzan. In 2021, he was very active. He competed on three occasions, going one and two, taking on the likes of Ricky Bandejas, David Martinez, and got that victory over Ernesto Ibarra back in May of 2021. Great hand there, yeah, left again, hand. He is just looking for it. Diaz, oh, there it is. You know, Kantu has found a home with that left hand on Diaz's chin. And he's going to have to be careful. Great job. But I've seen from Diaz, though, he was more of the, the pressured fighter. He was moving in more, but now he's backing up a little bit, huh? Well, you take a couple of shots to the chops like that, <laughs> that'll back you up. But definitely, hey, he's not backing down right here. That jab, we got each guy landing lefts like popcorn right now. Diaz has <sighs> competed in July of 2021. It was a defeat. However, trickle, he has not, he has trickle of blood right now coming down on the left eye of, of Diaz. Diaz. Diaz, though, he hasn't been active in MMA, but he's been active in the stand-up, taking on a couple of kickboxing bouts in his home country. In fact, he won the national WACO title, pro title, in Chile. Well, I'll tell you what, right now Diaz is showing me he's got a tough chin because Kantu has landed on it over and over successfully. Said he likes the fight game of veteran and future Hall of Famer Jose Aldo, along with Uriah Faber. Same intensity there, great exchange there, but Kantu. Yeah, too. I'm sure the pace will be picked up as we come back with the second round of his opening bout. Great action to kick off the evening, Martin, between Kantu. And Diaz from Chile. Yeah, I, I would give the edge right there to Kantu just on the more significant strikes. But both men landed, and a really tough round to call. But I would say that uh, Kantu is getting his range. Boom, with that left right there, over and over. But he's got to get inside to get it. And you see how, as long as Diaz is backpedaling, tough to do. 
Yeah, ever seen that he put his elbow up to cover instead of putting his fist up to the guard, huh? But right. Now we're ready for the second round between Chile's Felipe Diaz taking on Mexico's Alan Cantu. This is uh, in just a few, we'll get that open scoring so we'll know who is up ahead in this bout, Martin. And we've had this conversation with several fighters. If they are told if they are winning or losing. And that's, that's a motivation itself. You know, if you're in the second round, if you're down to fight, you're coming into the, la the third round. You got to push the pace and go for that KO or submission victory. Oh, without a doubt, I think the open scoring is a, a fantastic idea. Something I've talked about for a long time. Where, hey, then you know what's going on in every other sport. You know the score of the game, right? So, right now, again though, Great body I'm watching shot from Kantu. Yeah, Kantu is landing. He loves to strike. I don't think we're going to see these guys going to the ground today. Yeah, I don't see any likes of that. Felipe Diaz. It's great, great exchange. Uh, these guys are both throwing extremely hard with bad intentions, right? Oh, Diaz has had much success, though, with that left jab. Yeah, both guys' left hands are going to be hurting tomorrow no matter what. Cantu <laughs> already bleeding just a bit there on the nose area, and Diaz was bleeding underneath the uh, left eye. Yeah, both guys are chipped up right now, and, and rightly so. For anybody that wants to ever step in there, you take a few shots to the face, uh, this isn't the movies, right? Like, this is the real deal. Well, when you get oh. hit, stuff happens. And that's the open scoring. You're seeing it there, Martin. First round. Band goes to Kantu. Your yeah, thoughts so, on that score? Yeah, so that's how I saw it. I saw Kantu taking it, but like I said, it was so close that, yeah, it's not a coincidence that one of the judges saw it for Diaz. But, man, both guys landing right now. Now, do you, do you flip the switch here and take your opponent off guard and go for a takedown uh, if, if they were super comfortable there but I don't think that is the strategy either guy feels most comfortable with right now obviously Diaz is there to strike being in the kickboxing background and having watched so many of Contu's fights Contu loves to throw the leather too just like that yeah once he finds that gap he's just so quick to connect those combinations at one two Diaz reading his opponent very patient. Yeah, I think Diaz looks the fresher of the two fighters right now. But Kantu, again, not backing down. But you see how he has to, yeah. he's got to penetrate every time to get close enough to throw that punch. And, and I would say that Diaz is more the flashy guy. He's just ready to strike it. He even went and gestured a flying knee, but he held back. Well, right now, again, if you're going to... If you're going to fight a kickboxer in kickboxing, you got to be wearing. I think those jabs are starting to take some steam out of Kantu. Right, because Kantu is coming in, but every time, every time he comes into that pocket, he gets met with a cross. Oh, yeah, and when you All right. bring that weight in and take a jab in the face, Ooh, you're doubling right its power. But, man, continuing to throw. Yeah, Diaz, look, Diaz looks a lot fresher here. Warming up with that right hand to meet, although he, did, he got a little whiplash out of that one. <laughs> oh, both guys, you know, really going after it. I, I, I really have respect for this where neither guy taking a break, each guy continuing to throw, which I think the people that have the hardest job tonight will be the judges. It's a tough one as we're getting now to a minute and a half in this second round. Several appearances from Alan Cantu, eight to be exact. Kantu's starting to get on that motorcycle a little bit, though, and he's, he's, he's backpedaling a little. And uh, again, Diaz, Diaz starting to take control of the center. Diaz said, listen, I, I want to get back on that winning column. I know what I have to do. I have a good strategy. And uh, so far in this round, I, I, I think he's, he's a lot more impressive than that opening one. Yeah, well, uh, you know, Kantu was a little fresher, landed a lot of big lefts, and you haven't seen that in this round where with 45 seconds to go, I'm giving this round to Diaz. Now, do you think, Martin, when I'm looking at Cantu, it's more like he's, he's like throwing like a bait, putting his head out front. Well, it's, again, he's at a disadvantage in the reach. He's got to come in 
to, to land, but in order to come in, you gotta get through those strikes. Of course, the height there, you see the difference, but that lead leg from Diaz is there as well, Martin. Should you, should Khan two maybe kick that lead leg a little bit in the uh, inside to bring him down? Either fighter right now, I think they've both forgotten they have legs, and, just, <laughs> and they are just throwing punches with everything they've got. All right, as we finalize this second chapter of this bout, we get ready for our last round between Diaz and Cantu. There we have it, Cantu, a bloodied man, sitting down on that stool, getting fixed up a bit. Yeah, as he get ready for the next round. I definitely, you know, you can see it right there. That nose, uh, pretty damaged and uh, his spirit as well, because look at this, just eating shots in that round. And uh, without a doubt, Diaz took control of the fight right here, where now as we go into round three, it's anybody's game. Great kickboxing from Diaz. You could just see it right there. I love how he transitioned from the jab to the hook, perfectly executed from the Chilean as we get ready for the last round of Diaz and Cantu. Two men walking into the last round, bloodied. They know what's at stake. Lots of respect between these two guys going at it. Oh, these guys have, these guys have both put out a lot of energy right there, both taking some significant strikes. And whoever does more here is gonna win this fight. Let's yeah. see who wants it. Interesting to see what's gonna happen, what the judges decided in that second round. Again, this have, we do have open scoring. We'll get the heads up. As far as who is ahead, first round going to Cantu. Man, and Diaz, Diaz just continues to land those really hard strikes. It was the kind of strikes that Cantu was landing in the beginning. And I'll tell you what, though, right now, if the momentum continues to go this way, we could see Diaz taking it home. I, I, I question, though, that guard that Cantu has by positioning his elbows up because he does leave that rib area open. Yeah, but right now, all the damage is happening on the face. Now, there you go. Now, say, hey, if Kantu yeah. can continue to put combinations together like that, it's it's going to be who's more active right now. And, and, there, and it could get very right interesting. There. Yeah, if somebody goes to a ground, gets look a little the, takedown. Look at the open scrum right here, Martin. Yeah, so right now, Diaz's fight, but super close. Very close fight, very close fight over here. It's gonna take these two guys to bring a lot to impress the judges. Who wants it the most? We got three minutes and a half to prove it. And like you said before, Rodolfo, an interesting strategy. Imagine somebody lands a takedown, can continue to keep somebody down, ground and pound them some. You could, you could win the round like that, but I really don't think that's gonna happen right here. Now these guys are, are destined to be just take this fight and just strike all the way, all 15 minutes of the fight. Yeah, and Diaz's strikes right now, they've got more sting on them. And uh, man, Cantu's got to do a little bit of what he did in that first round. C Cantu almost seems just a little puzzled. You know, he's just, he's, it seems like he's doing the same thing, but he's just not connecting. He has to be maybe a, a little bit more, well, surprise the, him a bit, maybe? Well, well the difficulty is new. when you come in with a game plan, well, you know, the old saying, everybody's got a game plan until they get hit in the face. And uh, it's hard to make that change or the adjustment right now. And uh, man, Diaz continues to tee off. Obviously, that explosive is gone. That explosiveness is gone yeah. from Cantu. Diaz seems more confident leading into this last round. But these guys have, hey, we're, we're almost at 15 minutes in La Jaula. And for everybody to understand just the stamina that takes, and that's that's with getting hit, punched, and taking abuse, it's almost incredible. That's why I call these guys some of the greatest athletes in the world. You mentioned about that training that goes into the fights. Great combination from Diaz. He's been doing that all day. Yeah, Diaz continuing to land. This fight is slowly slipping out of the hands of Kantu. You talk about that training, Martin, and there's no doubt that cardio, we're just having a conversation, that cardio, you know, that endurance, that, that, that's what training's about. 
no no necessity to be lifting a whole ton of weights. Now, I remember my coaches just tell me, hey, forget the weights, just technique, technique, and go run. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> I'm still a big fan of the weights, though, too. And if you look at Diaz right here, he looks the bigger fighter, the stronger fighter, and you see each strike, even that Ooh. kick before, when he lands it, you see how Kantu nice right landed. Hand, yeah. He got that hook. Kantu got that hook. He snook it in. But then he ate that jam for it, too. They got a minute to go. Felipe yeah. Diaz. Yeah, one minute. This is where you get an opportunity to show the judges the final stuff. Finish with strength. And he's starting to land that kick now a little bit, too, which was there all night, like you said. Diaz hit that accelerator, though, there for that short minute. Laying on some great combinations. And Diaz deciding to get on his horse, move around a little bit, frustrate Contu more. Right, but you can move around a lot, but are you going to impress the judges? You got to do something with it. Well, I think I think he's done enough to win this round. I think he's 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 fighting, you know, a conservative fight right here, but he's continuing to land with 30 seconds left. Something big has to happen for Contu. If he wants to get that victory. The clock is ticking. And he's trying to work the body and maybe land. Still throwing, no, though. Still throwing. Nobody giving up here in La Jaula. Defending himself, trying to land something to take this one home. Man, what a great fight to open up this show. Each man gave everything they had, leaving bloodied. And, man, I, I am intrigued on yep. what's going to happen with the judges. I'm intrigued myself. We're about to find out who the winner is. Contu or Diaz? Coming up next, the result. Bueno, mi nombre es Jose Ferreira. Tengo 24 años y vengo del sur de Chile, de Temuco. My name is Patrick Delich Lahan. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Cork City, Ireland. Bueno, mi pelea de esta noche es contra Patrick Lahan, eh, un luchador de Irlanda. Eh, lo encuentro un peleador completo. Tiene muy buena striker, pero a mí no me supera en ninguna cualidad física. Así que por ende, yo creo que lo voy a llevar a mi terreno, que va a ser el suelo y la pelea va a terminar por un gran empate. My new opponent, he's from Chile. Uh, he's a, like he's a good, aggressive striker. It's going to be a fun fight. He's got he's got good grappling. He's a purple belt. I'm a purple belt, so it'll be even enough there. Mira, la verdad es Patrick está rankeado número tres. Imagínate, que ganarle al rankeado número tres y quedar al tiro tres. Eh, ¿Qué mejor? No, man, I don't feel any pressure at all about being number three. Um, like, I want to be champion, so if I can't handle number three pressure, what's, what's it going to be like when I'm champion, you know what I mean? So it's just numbers, like, every fight is different, and, and you go in there, just, you have to fight someone, there's like, that's all you have to worry about. Bueno, a Patrick le quiero mandar el mensaje que espero que se haya preparado bien, porque yo me preparé como siempre. I'm here to get my money and bring it home to my family, so get out of my way, I suppose. Back, Contu Diaz putting the bow on this opening bout of tonight's fight card. Felipe Diaz out of Chile, Chile, and Alan Cantu out of Mexico as we go to the final result. Who takes the victory? To La Voice, Lupe Contreras with the result. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, el juez Lázaro anotó 30 a 27. After three rounds of much more action, Judge Lazaro scores it 30 to 27. Y los jueces Streisand y Mirasola anotaron 29 a 28. Judges Streisand and Mirasola scored about 29 to 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del vencedor por decisión unánime. El loco Felipe. Well, there's nothing crazy about that victory. El loco Felipe Diaz.
taking home a W back in the winning column, defeating Mexico's Alan Cantu. That's a happy man. Congratulations to this young man. Enter La Hala for the first time as we get ready for our next bout coming up next.